We polled 300 art of problem solving students about what facial skills they have. 111 can wiggle both of their ears, while 57 can wiggle just one ear. 89 of them can raise one eyebrow without raising the other, while 123 can flare their nostrils. 137 can curl their tongue. 274, it's almost all of them, can make some fish lips. While only five of them can do that. Very special skill. Now imagine I ask you to order these from the most common skill to the least common skill. Well, you could do it with this, but you're not going to be happy about it. If you see a paragraph like this in a book you're reading, I know what you're going to do. You're going to skip it, because that's painful to look at. Hard to pick out the numbers, hard to pick out the data. You want to see something maybe that looks a little bit more like this. This is a table. We have one row for each skill. You can pick out the skills really easily. You can pick out the numbers really easily. So I can look through here. 274, that's the highest. Fish lips is the most common. Five, that's the lowest. Weird lips, that's the least common. But, you know, if all we really care about is the order, don't care about the exact numbers here, there's an even faster way to look at these data. We can do this. This is a bar chart or you call it a bar graph, there's one bar for each skill. And we can just glance at this and see immediately, fish lips, most common, most students can do that. Weird lips, that's the hardest, almost no one can do that. You have to be a real freak to be able to do that. Now, you can also compare all any two of these. You can quickly see, curl tongue, that's easier than wiggle one ear. Flare nostrils, that's easier than wiggle both ears. We can put them in order, just at a glance tallest bar, fish lips, next is curl tongue, next is flare nostrils, next is wiggle both ears, then raise one eyebrow, then wiggle one ear, and then last, the hardest, weird lips. So the bar chart here allows us to compare pairs very easily. We can see the relative comparison too. See fish lips is about, you know, on the order of twice as common as these, and it's just way, way easier than the weird lips. So the bar chart gives us a nice graphical, quick-glance way to compare different skills to each other. Let's take a look at another type of chart. Here, we had another poll of all of our students, and we asked them, what's your favorite subject? Now, remember, this is our problem-solving student, so there's some selection bias here. 56% said math, and 24% said science, and math is the language of science, so that's okay by us. 7% said anything but history. I'm sure math was second there too, so that's okay as well. 11% is English. I can forgive those students. I had some really good English teachers too. 2% said speech, because, well, everybody hates speech. Well, except for me. You know I love to run my mouth. So this was the result of our poll. And we draw this nice little pie chart here, where the slice of each slice of the pie is the size relative to how many people gave that answer. So 56% said math, slightly more than half the pie is the math slice. 24% said science, slightly less than a quarter of the pie is science. Then same for these, you know, speech, almost no one said speech. It's a little tiny sliver. So I can tell just by looking at this graph what portion of a whole, without even looking closely at the numbers, I can tell at a glance a little more than half the people like math around a quarter of them like science, almost nobody likes speech. And that's what a pie chart is good for, is revealing parts of a whole. And that's why we're not going to use a pie chart back here. These different skills don't all together make up a whole. Back here, each student is going to fall into one, exactly one of these slots. And all together, when we add all these up, we'll get all the results, all of the answers to our poll. Whereas over here, some students, some people are going to be in one or two of these. Some of them are going to be done. They're going to be people who have no skills at all, can't do any of them. And then they're going to be total freaks that can do all seven of them. So we can't put these all together and say that these are all parts of some whole because some people are in a bunch of these slots. Whereas here, each person is in exactly one slot, only one slot. So we can use a pie chart when we want to display parts of a whole. And that's what we're doing here. Now let's go ahead and tackle a quick problem using the data here. Imagine 21 said anything but history. How many chose science? 
Now, we can tackle this problem in a bunch of different ways. First, well, 21 is 7% of everybody. So, we could just say x is the total, and 7% of x has to be 21. So, we get an equation, 0.07x equals 21. Divide both sides by 0.07, 21 over 0.07. And you divide 7 into 21, you get 3. We well, got the decimal place to deal with. That'll come out to be 300. So once you know that there are 300 total, well, 24% of them said science. So 24% of 300 is 0.24 times 300. 3 times 24 is 72. So that's one way we could have tackled the problem. Now another way we could tackle that, tackle this, say, well, 7% is 21. Well, if I divide by 7, that means 1% is 3. So if 1% is 3, then 24% is 24 times 3. That gives us 72. And then yet another way we can do this is we can say, well, y is the number in science. And we can set up, set up a ratio here. We know that the, the ratio of science to anything but history is 24 to 7. And that's going to be equal to y to 21. Because y is the total number of students in science. And we know that 21 said anything but history. Set up this proportion here comes from our, this ratio here comes from our percents, 24 to 7. And this is the actual number of students. y in science, 21 said anything but history. And now we can clearly just multiply both parts of this ratio by 3. We'll get 72 again. And you might be wondering, why didn't we just show this as a bar chart? And we definitely could. We could have easily taken these, the same responses here, and stuck them in a bar chart here. Now, what we can't tell from the bar chart is, is math more or less than half the total? Well, we have to do some thinking here. We can clearly order them using the bar chart, just like we did with those wicked skills. We can see math was the best, science is the next best, then English, then not history, and then speech. But we can't see very easily what the proportion of a whole is. We can't see that science actually is about a quarter of the total. The pie chart tells us that right at a glance. We see a little quarter pie slice. We know the science is around a quarter of the total. So the bar chart is great for us to compare these to each other. The pie chart is great for comparing them to the entire thing. Now that you understand the difference between a pie chart and a bar chart, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, how did he do that weird lip thing? 